Hello everyone, Chris back again on Being Unleashed. Welcome to the follow-up video for the RX 9070 XT, and today I'll be doing some undervolting and just overall tinkering with the GPU. I thank you very much for your support and feedback on that switching to AMD video. Honestly, I didn't expect it to blow up this much, although I had some ideas that it might garner some attention, but to not such a degree. This is going to be a follow-up video and also I'm going to do more benchmarks on it. So upon your requests, I'll be downloading some other games alongside them and also be testing the undervolting and see how much this improves the thermals and also the performance for the GPU. Cause I've heard some very positive feedback in the comment section from you everyone. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Alright oh boys, here we go. So I fired up the PC, I decided to do like a live commentary, just like the previous one. As you could see in the corner right there, I have my AMD 9070 XT box. So yes, I'm running a triple monitor setup, this is mostly just for Discord. This way is mostly for work and of course this one is for work as well. But when I want uh, to play some games, I usually just fire this thing up, the second PC and I just chill out. And I would like to say first impressions about the AMD Adrenaline. I really like this software. It's very good, it's very, let's say, polished, they really worked up on this software, it actually is sometimes better than Nvidia GeForce Experience, or now however it's called, I think it's Nvidia app. So you could see, we have like the games, just showing here FPS, I didn't even know this, apparently AMD tracks how much FPS you got in games, and see, I've been playing like, well this is mostly Warzone, so I've been playing Warzone and it says like, 130 FPS, for Fortnite it's 120 FPS, and I've been playing for 100 minutes. This one is for 30 minutes for some reason. I don't know why, I think it bugged, but you could see like I have a couple of games here. And also I got like the capture with the screen recording, which is really cool. Apparently they even record in AV1, which is very very cool. I think even GeForce Experience still records in H.264, while AMD software is recording in AV1, and it saves a ton of storage. I think I'm going to follow Tekes City's tutorial, cause I've seen him tinker with a 9070. So see you in just a bit, I'll be firing up everything that I need to do the undervolting. Oh yeah boys, by the way, before I actually jump into this, as I've said, actually one of the reasons why I switched to 9070 XT is because I'm thinking of switching to Linux. Again, Windows 10 is going to expire. It's probably gonna end up in 2026, so I'll probably, you know, just switch to Bazite because this one got controller support, everything related to the drivers, everything that is basically gaming related is mostly for Bazite. And having AMD, AMD Advantage system, that's how they usually call it, I got the 5950X and of course the 9070XT, it's basically AMD Advantage, so it should be painless to just install Linux and have fun with it. So I've been watching a bit of uh, Tech City's content piece, and this is where we start uh, doing the process of actually testing out the undervolting. So we need to go to performance, and you have to click on tuning, and this is where you basically start uh, messing around with your system. It's actually interesting to see my 5950X here, because again, I've never actually bothered to use AMD software to check this thing out. Apparently I can do an overclocking on it, but again I'm going to raise, actually explain to you why. My 5950X is trash. This thing is uh, basically a loss when it comes to silicon lottery. I've tried my best to actually undervolt it, uh, overclock it, do PBO. Just by enabling the PBO, my PC crashes. This processor is cooked, so I'm not going to be undervolting it, overclocking it, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Cause honestly it just works, I do not uh, want to mess around with the CPU, just have tons of features and stuff like that. Many, many unbearable moments later. So boys, uh, this is my second take at trying to record this. Apologies uh, in advance, I tried to do it in Call of Duty, but Call of Duty is just not acting up. Well, I've researched the uh, Tech City's video until the end, and apparently he says the best thing to do is basically to do a uh, minus 30% at fan, at uh, power tuning, and also do like minus 80 millivolts plus already the VRAM tuning. So I think I might go with high. I'm going to upgrade it to very to high. I'm going to leave it like this, and I'm not gonna apply vertical sync. I already got fired up too. This one is from AMD. This one is already, as I said, the MSI afterburner, and I'll be using these two to measure the performance. So yeah, right now I got 230 FPS. This is how it loaded up. So let's start messing around with this thing. I'm going to go to VRAM tuning. 
In the Avirian tuning, I was told we could go with 2800. So I'm going to enable this one. I'm going to set it 2800. I'm not going to scroll that thing. I'm just going to set it 2800. And I'll try fast timing. Let's apply these and see if it will crash or not. So I've applied this. Okay, now it should set... Yeah, now it's at 2786. The VRAM is a bit faster now. And uh, right now we are sitting at 340 watts when it comes to power consumption. I'll be doing an alt tab and I'll try to mess around now with the voltage. Uh, looks like they usually say minus 80 meter volts. I'm going to try minus 70 and see if it will crash or not. So I'm going to apply the change now. And looks like it hasn't crashed. Which is good. Nothing uh, uh, decided to implode on me. Still got 220 FPS. It's a bit uh, stuttering. Hello, insurgent. Nice to meet you. They're already fighting here. I see. So I guess I have to play just a little bit. I'm gonna try minus 80. I did try minus 100. It did crash in Call of Duty. So I'm not gonna push my luck that much. So this is minus 80. Nothing uh, spectacular. No, no crashes yet. I'm gonna quickly do a resupply. So yeah, right now uh, the power consumption is 340 watts. I'm gonna do an alt tab. Yeah, it's 340 watts. I'm gonna to highlight it on the second monitor. The memory is still set, 84 degrees. So let's go with power tuning. I'm gonna set it to minus 30. That's basically all the way down. I'm gonna apply changes. And the power should be reduced now. Yeah, now it's at 240 watts. So apparently this is the best setup for undervolting, although you kind of lose a bit of performance, they say about 5 FPS I see here, but 5 FPS, but you lose like 100 watts, that is very very good. I mean, in the game right now I still got like 245, I know it's a different region, but still, it's like a better FPS than what it used to be. Oh hi! Yeah, looks like the CPU memory temperature is at 80 degrees. We even got some reduction when it comes to memory degrees, because I did saw last time when I was playing about 85 to 86 degrees on the, on the memory itself, so it is a reduction compared to what it used to be. And let me tell you, it's no longer a furnace. I can feel the difference, because it usually just blasts out uh, hot air. So yeah, I guess this is how I'm gonna go. We could try, I mean, I could go by default, but it's going to consume like 340. But again, I have the target of this video is mostly to undervolt, so we can have more performance. And so far I can see the performance is still here, not a huge loss when it comes to the, the quality. So we are very good here. I guess I'll try playing uh, some more games and just, you know, see how it performs in our titles. Now let's actually try to uh, get this objective, because these folks have been uh, camping me for like morons. Okay, number one there I think. Yeah, it's actually very comfy, not gonna lie, it's no longer a furnace. Even in MSI after burners, you can see it's like much better now compared to what it used to be. Well boys, I think this is it. I think I found the perfect undervolt uh, for the game. Right now it's sitting at 253 FPS. This is going to be it uh, when it comes to actual undervolting. Now I'll do some benchmarks and see how this game plays. And uh, I'll probably try to disable it and enable it and see the differences between how it works with one enabled and with one disabled. Back to a voiceover Chris now boys. So yeah, I've been uh, playing a bit of insurgency. As you can see with the undervolt, it consumes about 150 watts. 120 to 140 FPS, I mean this is an Unreal Engine 4 game, so it's kinda expected, you know, to have frame dips here and there. But so far it works pretty well, the power on the GPU is pretty decent, it's not a furnace, so I'm really happy with the results on this one. Also I'd like to shout out ZWormZ Gaming for these uh, MSI Afterburner settings for the benchmarks. I actually forgot to do that while recording the previous video, so I want to set things right. A uh, special thank you for him uh, for providing the profiles for the MSI Afterburner so you can see the details everyone. For Warzone, this is going to be my last ever time I'm actually going to play this pile of shit. So on this one I've actually reduced the millivoltage to minus 70 and looks like it's working fine. As you can see the temperatures are fine. Around the 68 degrees, the power again it's uh, just jumping from 200 to 130. 
Yeah, it's a pretty decent uh, upgrade overall. Now here's a benchmark for Forza Horizon 5, I know you've been requesting this one in the comments boys, so appreciate the feedback. As you can see, 230 pinned, sometimes it goes above, like maybe 240, it depends really on the use case. So yeah, 144 FPS on this one, sometimes it falls to 140, it depends on the case. But yeah, runs pretty stable, no issues here when it comes to the undervolting. Now here's some real uh, gameplay when it comes to this thing. I've actually recorded two pieces right here. One is from the Hot Wheels DLC and the other is in the base game. But yeah, with the undervolt it works fine. I barely see any dips in the frame rate, so it works pretty well on Extreme on Forza Horizon 5. Here are the settings for Miles Morales. I actually had to enable FSR. I tried to use FXAA or whatever it was called. The game looks straight up ass. Well, during the fight uh, with some of those mobsters, I did experience a crash, because again, I was running at minus 80 millivolts. I had to fix uh, the crashes by uh, lowering the millivolt restriction to minus 70 instead of minus 80, and that kind of fixed the issue. So yeah, in the city I got like 100 FPS. I mean, again, this is FSR free, it's not really the best. I personally just disabled that, so I can have, you know, the image as clean as possible. Like for help? <laughs> you didn't really have a way to get in touch to this app thing. I saw you on the news last night taking down Rhino. Now to actual proper benchmarks, so I fired up Marvel Rivals on this one. I did experience some dips. I know this is kinda a common issue for Unreal Engine when you enable the highest settings. So yeah, I did experience a stutter on this one. So here are the explosions and so on. As you can see, I got about 90 FPS to 100. It depends really on the use case. Alright boys, so I've put uh, these things side by side, as you can see, I did have a big stutter in the undervolt thing, so I had like, uh, for some reason, 8 FPS on the lows when it comes to the undervolt thing. I guess this is because of Unreal Engine, because again, it does have sometimes some shaders which really do these like spikes. So yeah, I've actually gained a couple of FPS by having this thing undervolted. So Marvel Rivals actually is a, quite a unique case scenario. Uh, using the undervolt it actually has higher FPS compared to other titles where they usually per see some performance regression. Another surprise really is the Monster Hunter Wilds. I've actually downloaded this benchmark right here and as you can see I did do some of these scores. Another ironic benchmark right here, actually doing an undervolt on Monster Hunter Wilds it actually gave me higher performance. So while playing uh, with the normal one, I got about 86 FPS and the score is 29,300. But when I actually go and go without the undervolt, even the FPS is lower. I have no idea why using undervolt it actually gives better scores compared to, you know, other titles. Looks like Unreal Engine 5 games actually appreciate the undervolt, because I usually see higher performance for these titles compared to the others. Here's the Cyberpunk test boys, as you can see I got like about 80 FPS when it comes to this benchmark. I'm honestly very surprised considering this has ray tracing as well. Although again I have to mention this uses FSR free. So you can kinda see this smeariness when it comes to the gameplay. I personally played this one a bit with DLSS and still saw it blurry so I just disabled that thing. So yeah, using uh, FSR I got about 70 FPS on ultra wide 1440p which is very very solid. Skipping to the end results, using undervolting I lost a bit of FPS, I saw some regression in this title, I lost about 4 average FPS, with the maximum FPS also falling just a bit behind. Although I'm going to mention this again, shaving off 100 watts of the GPU and sacrificing about 5 FPS is really a banger deal. Instead of having a furnace underneath me, I lost like a couple of FPS, which doesn't really matter that much. Let's go with uh, some Rainbow Six Siege, I personally haven't played this one since 2019. So on Rainbow Six Siege I did experience once again uh, some regression. For some reason I had a huge stutter, a uh, lag spike, when a door blew up in the undervolted thing. And the FPS result was basically just like my monitor refresh rate, 144Hz. 
So boys, I hope you enjoyed these benchmarks and also comparing the undervolted versus the normal results. Yeah, you lose a bit of performance, but again, it's well worth it because you shave off 100 watts of the GPU. So instead of 340, it consumes 240. That's a sizable difference, especially when you are in a hot, hot country where the air is just a mess. So yeah, this is voiceover Chris uh, done with a commentary. Now let's wrap up this video with Chris from the future. Future Chris here, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching uh, those experiments and uh, tinkering with the undervolting. I had to do a bit of unzooming when it comes to the screen because of course I got an ultra wide. It comes with great efficiencies, but at the same time I do have some trade-offs. As you could see, I shaved off about 100 watts of a vGPU, which is very excellent. Instead of 344 watts, now I have 240 watts. It doesn't spew flames underneath my seat. But I have some losses when it comes to percentile lows. So yeah, there are some trade-offs when it comes to actually doing these undervolting things. But I take the efficiency. I'd rather not having a, a fire hazard under my feet. So it's actually a good thing in winter when I can actually just disable the undervolting and have a warmer air of my feet. It was actually interesting to do benchmarks, uh, although I expected it to be quite easier. I mean, it's just download some games and just enable and disable some settings. So yeah, I can't believe uh, through how much stress uh, dudes like Hardware Unbox and Gamers Nexus go through just to have, you know, data when it comes to GPUs. Plus they test multiple systems with 9800X3D and so on. So yeah, quite interesting uh, how they do this kind of stuff. Yes, this AMD GPU is actually me pulling the trigger on doing a Linux switch. I've been thinking about this for quite some time since Windows 10 is going to die in October 2025. So it's kind of a reason why, because again, Nvidia has trash drivers, plus I'll have to run Windows 11. Although I'll have to research what kind of distros should I use, I've been recommended Bezite, but personally I've been interested mostly in Linux Mint, maybe some Kubuntu. I might as well just try, you know, Arch by the way, although that is quite hard to install. So I'll probably do a Linux journey update on the AMD thing, so stay tuned for that boys. And I hope you enjoyed me messing around with this GPU and trying to get more performance out of it, I guess. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to throw a thumbs up. And also if you'd like to see more content related to tech, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you can see more appear in your content feed. This was Chris, thank you for watching. Stay on edge.